Welcome back to Irish Luck, folks. Uh, <laughs> we we made it. Uh, first things first. Uh, Pete wants, uh, and so do I. Want to apologize for being so long out of the loop and and uh, not really being here for you. So uh, I'll go first. I've been. I had a, a my eye blow up and had a mini stroke, uh, and, and we've had lots of other challenges. Uh, Pete's been moving, got hit by a car, all kinds of shit. But uh, we've been keeping the balls in the air and keeping the deal with uh, the development deal going and, and trying to keep you guys in the loop. But uh, we apologize. So that's my part. Go ahead, Petey. Yeah, that thing about his eyeball, staring at too many women. That's, that's a fact. <laughs> yes, we had, we, we, had, we had some difficulties for a little while there, you know, with this pandemic. I, you know, got it. I had a bad car accident. Rocky's had problems with his mom and stuff, so... But we're back on the track, and I'm so glad you're still there. I apologize for my heart. I really love all these people, and we're here to give you some good stories, though true stories. So That's take it away, nice. Rock. What's on your mind? All right. Well, let's uh, let's first start talking about uh, Sony Pictures uh, or, or our or our executive at Sony Pictures, who will be uh, developing and producing our scripted series, uh, Pete the Pick, which will you know, intersect a lot of stories and a lot of different lives. Uh, uh, and, and we want to just update you. Uh, Pete has talked with Norris and, uh, and they like each other. That's good news for the beginning of a, uh, of, a of a project that we're going to be working together. We all have to like each other. Um, and we're going to be heading down, uh, probably mid June to talk to Pete and we'll be, cause, uh, uh, Norris has a, a deal with um, LT down there and we're going to do it all in one shot. And once we, and, and they're doing the research right now, they got the research team on all the, you know, thousands of hours of, of videos and stories that we have and background uh, to develop the series. So um, Pete, why don't you tell us what you think of Norris and, and your experience with him so far? Oh, I think he's a great guy. Hey, pictures. And let's talk about our development deal with them and Nars Preston over there, who's uh, working with Sony. Uh, you know, he's a producer with them, but uh, uh, we may be producing it outside of Sony. Uh, so uh, we're not sure, but he's an executive with Sony. He's doing the development deal with us. Uh, he has spoken with Pete and he likes Pete, which is good. Whenever we have a, a deal, we got to work together for a very long time. You know, a uh, series is usually four or five years minimum. So we better all like each other. Uh, but they've talked on the phone. And I just wanted Pete to tell you his opinion of NARS and, and the project and, and where it's at and you know, how long we've been doing this and, and, and what it looks like to him right now. Well, my short version of what I think of NARS, from what I've talked to him, and I haven't yet met him personally, but he sounds like a hell of a guy. He sounds like a guy that when he says something, he means it. I think this guy is going to take us somewhere, you know, with what we're trying to do. Um, hopefully I'll see him mid-June. He's supposed to come up and talk to me about something about one of the stories he's doing besides all our other stuff, uh, Pete the Pick. And uh, I have to die, thank Rock for that because uh, he's going to put this together with uh, Norris. Him and Norris get along real great, which is good for me because they're together, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, all I can say is thank you, Rock, and uh, thank you, Norris giving us a chance and thank don't you don't forget Norris I still got a hat for you <laughs> <laughs> hey I had somebody asking about that hat and trying to trying to pay us a lot of money for it too so he's holding out for you Norris so don't forget all right um do the right thing so anyway oh uh, along those lines this summer um Gianni Russo our friend uh, I was talking to him the other day, the guy, Gianni Russo, who played Car Carlo in The Godfather, for those of you who don't know, uh, in the original Godfather. And uh, he just wrote a book called Hollywood Godfather. So, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about Gianni Russo because we're going to see him this summer. And for those of you who don't know, Gianni Russo is uh, the guy who played Carlo in The Godfather. He has a best-selling book called The Hollywood Godfather in seven different countries, and they make a movie about it. Uh, Gianni has invited uh, Pete and I to his home, which is the home of uh, Frank Costello that is will do Gianni. Uh, it's a Park Avenue home. 
uh, it was the mob boss, uh, Frank Costello, willed it to Gianni Russo because they were that close. Um, uh, Gianni is a good friend of mine, and uh, I introduced Pete to Gianni uh, uh, last year, and, uh, and they've spoken a few times on the phone, and Gianni is happy uh, you know, talk to us about uh, combining some stories that may run parallel and uh, and being a part of uh, Pete the Pig series, maybe um, as a you know an actor uh, in our series, probably as an actor in our series because he's acted in uh, any given Sunday with Al Pacino, in addition to a lot of other movies. He's been a ton of sh- shit, um, movies and TV shows. So um, anyway. Uh, Pete and uh, Pete, uh, uh, you want to talk to the folks, Gianni, and how you feel about Gianni and uh, and his credibility with uh, the uh, mafia? <laughs> well, I have to say, if you go to one to ten, Gianni is a ten, you know, and uh, that's why I would be happy to sit down and talk to him because we have a lot of mutual friends and mutual stories that we uh, going to see if they're uh, well good enough to be put on the air. That's what I'm going to say, you know, to share with all of uh, as far as Yanni Russo, if you don't remember who he is, remember this. Leave the gun and take the cannolis. He was a guy who was putting his feet through the windshield. <laughs> That's Gianni Russo. Anyhow. Gianni, hello. If you're listening, God bless you. I hope to see you soon. All right? And that's my end to Gianni Russo. All right. uh, oh. Yeah. So here we go. We are doing a lot and we're trying to cover a lot of ground and catch up with you folks. We'll probably break this up into a couple of different shows because, you know, your attention span is, uh, you know, not that great, guys. Yeah, we love you, but just saying, you can sit down, you know, have a cup of coffee, have a donut. Now spend a little more time with me and Pete. All right. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right. Don't make me so let's, let's, let's get on. <laughs> <laughs> let's get on to the uh to the good stuff right let's talk about uh, the guy that everybody's talking about on the internet now you know um changed life but who his life hasn't really changed still thinks he's a mobster uh says he's still a mobster but he's not um i don't know you you uh, i don't know how that all works in someone's mind you know, the little I know, I'm not in the game. I don't know the game. I don't know. I don't know anything about it, you know, other than from the outside looking in. But it just doesn't oh. seem to make any sense to me. Uh, Sammy the Bull Gravano. Well, let me talk to you about it a little bit. I want to give you a, a little bit of my perspective because if I wanted to tell you that I know about this guy, we'd be here for a year. And, uh, you know, he talks about who he still is and what he is. But meanwhile, Everybody knows, even if they don't know the mafia, that the code is from Jump Street, you never become a rat. Okay? And I don't care if the Holy Grail was standing in front of you telling you that, you know, I'm, I'm going to snitch on you. That doesn't mean that you can take it upon yourself to be a rat. A man is a man, you know what I mean? You know, he should have got off that witness stand like Billy Boy Johnson. Did. When John was on trial, he got down and sat in the defendant's box. But no, he took it upon himself to put John Gotti in prison forever. So where is where is his loyalty to the code that he took to you? What he, what he, what he joined? He didn't join the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. He joined a group of guys that had a certain code. And the rule number one was a mantra. You never, ever tell. And the last thing you do is tell, get out there again, break the law again, and start telling again. I mean, what the, is that the way our government works? But like I said, I'm not going to get in depth to it right now, but uh, my personal feeling is him, and I, I've met him a few times. You know, I've seen him anyhow. I never never cared for the guy. He's always, uh, like, uh, how can I say it, on edge. You know what I mean? You know, for whatever reason, you know, a lot of people say it was steroids. A lot of people say that. I don't know for facts, so I'm not going to say it. The only thing I know for a fact is that he was a disgrace to the code he took. Right. 